So, we have seen the errors, different types of errors we have seen, we have seen the exceptions, different types of exceptions also we have seen. Now, what we need to understand the term which we are going for the exception handling. So, first what I will do is the programmatically I will raise some exceptions and then I will I will handle it and I will be showing to you like how exactly we are going to handle this uh, different types of exceptions in that right. So, let us say for example, a very popular thing what is there in the very popular thing like if I am writing a suppose when I am writing a main method. So, in the case of main method what exactly we are trying to achieve is you should look at this now proper manner first what is that? Suppose int i am writing i 1 is equal to 10 divided by let us say I am writing here 0 first. It is a very simple program which I am writing and then here I am printing i 1, i 1 I am printing. The thing or the options which we are adopting here like 10 divided by 0 something in mathematics if we will see about the mathematics. So, mathematically 10 divided by 0 something we can say it is not defined that the this kind of operation itself is not allowed in this and we cannot write it fine. But what next now? If I am see first of all what I will do now I will compile this program or I am running you can say this program. When I am running this program there is some we are getting some exception type understand this exception type is this. Now, the exception type which we are getting is I will be just uh, writing down here. This is the first exception type which we are getting. Why we are getting this exception type? Because we are dividing something by the 0 and if you are dividing something by the 0, so this will come or this will raise the exception. Okay. Now, you tell me one thing this code itself like I will write some different way int of i 1 i is equal to integer dot parse int I am writing here a r g s of let us say I am writing 0. Here also something as I have written and instead of writing 0 instead of hard coding it I am writing 1. Now, you see what I am doing now the first line which I am writing something you can take the values from the command line. Okay. Now, as a programmer can you think what all different users will be providing, what all different types of input for this program? No, you cannot say. User can provide anything. So, let us say what all cases are there. Number 1, user can provide any input. Number 2, user cannot provide, you, user may not provide anything in that. If anything user is not providing then, okay, maybe when user is providing also something. So, maybe the compatibility is not there in that. So, let us say first thing which I am doing is I am not giving any kind of input inside this. When I am not giving any kind of input, so this is showing one arithmetic array index out of bound exception fine. Here some exception is coming, some exception which is there it is coming here. Okay. When the exception is coming called as array index out of bounds exception, some exception which is uh, there inside that and as well as it is coming here. So, what next we need to understand now? See, exception reason as we are the technical guys, so we can understand what is the reason for this exception array index out of bound exception. We can understand, but the person or think about the user who is not knowing anything technically, which means what is the reason for this exception? I will tell you that we are not providing this value from the command line, so it is giving the exception expected number of values which you are not providing. So, it is giving the exception. But we need to tell or you need to inform to the user in a proper informative manner like this should be the or because of this we should write this or not. So, okay, what now we will do? We will write here something, we will write try and something. What next I am writing now? Catch I am writing, understand this one. What is the use of try and catch? See, the code which you are suspecting that here exception may occur. Why I am saying exception may occur? Because the occurrence of the exception is dependent on the user what user value is providing. So, if you are writing something, so here see, so you are writing try means try this exception if any exception is there, 
then it will try to handle it. Okay, we'll see what how it is handling and all the things it is doing in that. So in that now, when in the case of catch block, I am writing here some exception of e. I am writing, right? And when exception of e, I am writing. So I am writing here. What next? I am writing now. E. I am writing here. What is that? I am writing now. E. I am writing here. E. I am trying to print here. Now some important points are there which we should focus on. What all important points are there which we should focus on? Number one point. What is this E? E is an simple reference variable. E is an simple reference variable. So, what is the content of E? That is the important thing. So, I am printing here. I am sorry, I am compiling, running this program. It is giving array index out of bounds exception. Okay, well, when it is giving array index out of bounds exception, so what I will do now? I will comment this line. When I am commenting this line again, I am running it. What it is giving now? It is not printing anything, it is just printing in main. Okay. It means something was there inside the in. So, from where? Because as what I can understand, that exception is a class and E is the reference variable of that class. So, the maximum it could print that. What it could print? A null it can print, which is a default value of any type of reference variable. Since it is a local reference variable E, so, we cannot assign or we uh, means by default it will not print any value. Okay. So, how it is printing this different options? Like let us say I am providing some different inputs here. What I am providing like suppose I am providing ABC as an input I am providing here. So, it is giving number format exception. Number format exception it is giving for that like it is. So, this is all things is being printed with the help of this. So, I will tell you or I will explain you how all that things is coming. So, number one, what piece of code you are suspected, you write it into the try and try block and the type of exception which you wanted to handle, you write it inside the catch block, right. Here I am coming here. So, the first you understand here. What you need to understand is, whenever any exception occurred, understand my point. Whenever any short of exception occur, let us say the exception occurrence point is maybe at this also exception may occur or at this also exception may occur. At any point of time, exception may occur in your program, right. Whenever any exception occur, let us say y in the first case y exception will occur, y here exception will occur because suppose this is your console. When you are running the program, so you are giving some input here. So, if that input, so what it is expecting, what is the expectation of this that from this string array ARGS, we are trying to get one element and that element will come only when you are providing some value from the command line. If, if some value is not coming, so it cannot take that input or it cannot get that input. Very simple. So, if it is not getting any input, so integer dot parse int ARGS of 0. So, what it we are getting now? If no input is there, so it will give array index out of bounds exception. That is a technical thing, so we will handle it. Okay. So, whenever any short of exception occurred, understand my point. Here, if problem occurred, immediately your control will be transferred to which one now? JVM. Whenever any type of problem occurred, your control will be transferred to the JVM. JVM will now try to identify that what type of problem actually occurred over here. JVM will try to identify what is the nature of the exception which occurred here, right. It will identify the nature of exception which is occurred, like whether it is the type of exception, compile time exception, runtime exception or what exactly this exception is. After identifying, it will do the many steps in that, that already uh, we have discussed or uh, we will discuss it. After doing that, now JVM what it is doing, after identifying it, it will create the object of that type of exception and it throws to your program. After creating or after identifying the problem of exception, it create and it throws to your program. When it is throwing to your program in that, now it like suppose as we have discussed for any type of exceptions, super class is which one now? Exception class. This is the super class of all types of exception. Is it okay? Super class for all types of exception. So, if any exception which is occurred between this try block, 
that exception will be the subclass of exception class itself. And what I told, JVM is creating the object of the exception occurred and again throwing back to your program. When it is throwing back to your program, so in that case it is identifying one thing. What it is identifying one thing? What it is identifying? It is identifying that, what it is identifying that? whether the any matching catch block is available or not. Here it is checking in this, whether any matching catch block is available or not. Catch block matching means, so see, when first catch block itself it is missing, this is the super type of exception. So, super class, suppose, reference variable. And in that already, subclass object is being created and thrown by the JVM. So, that will be stored inside this. When it is stored, so already we know that two string method has been overridden inside that throwable. So internally it will call, what it will call now here, e dot, two string method it is going to call and because of that, that corresponding nature of the exception it is printing in that. Is it okay now? Okay. If suppose matching catch block is not found, let us say in some cases maybe the matching catch block is not found in that. Then what happens here? If suppose the matching catch block is not found, so it will print some default message that uh, this is something the exception and all which is occurring inside your program. Okay, what I will do now next, that I will try to handle this exception by writing the multiple try and catch. I am trying to handle this exception by what now? By multiple try and catch and I will be printing some messages on your console like how it has to be printed suppose. So, see whenever you are writing multiple try and catch block remember one point that the catch block parameter or the catch parameter which you are writing that must be sub to super type it should not be like super to sub type. So, it must be from the sub to super type of exceptions you should write inside the catch block you should not write from super to sub it will give the error uh, that is the compilation error. So, let us say like I am writing catch of, what is the catch of? Arithmetic exception I am writing here. So, see, this is the super class and this is the subclass. Why it is giving error? Why it is giving error? Because if let us say any type of exception if occurred, so that could be handled here itself. So, there is no use of writing the second one here. Getting my point? Because of that, it, it is the point like whatever things which we are writing, it should be from the sub to super. So, here now what I will do is now I will comment this piece of code. Now, say here again what next I am doing now? I will be just removing this code. I will remove it now and I will put it here inside this. In that I am writing here, right? So, one is arithmetic exception I am writing. Second one now I am writing again catch. Why I need to write the multiple try and catch? why I need to write the multiple try and catch block inside this now first. So, see here now, array index out of bound exceptions which we are writing in this. When I am writing array index out of bound exception, again associated with that catch block I am writing. When I am writing the catch block inside this, so there is some more things which again I am writing here. What is that inside this I am writing now? Let us say here that is the number format exception I am writing. Number format exception I am writing inside this. Okay, that is the number format exceptions again which I have written here inside this. So, this is the different different types of exceptions I am writing inside this. The reason why I have written all that is, reason why I am writing all that is, in this now, different different things which we are writing here. What all the different things I am writing now? Suppose arithmetic exception occurred. So, at least we can understand what is the type of arithmetic exception can occur. We can understand what is the type of arithmetic, what is the reason for the exception. So, arithmetic exception is what now? Please do not provide 0 value, I am writing this one, plus inside this now I am writing e, I am writing this. Now again, 
I'm printing the message so that my user can understand something. So array index out of bound exception, suppose I'm writing. What is that array index out of bound exception I'm writing now? The array index out of bound exception is that something like, say here, array, array index out of bounds exception E when I'm writing. So which please provide some value. We can get some value in this. Number format exception means here and I am writing something inside that. So, please provide some, some or you can say numeric value itself. Numeric value itself I am writing here. So, the plus of which one now I am writing? E I am writing here. And then again inside this, I will be writing some other things also. What is that other things I am writing now inside this? Let us say for example, is here, uh, I am writing is something called as the boss of all types of exceptions which I am writing inside that, which means that what I am trying to represent that if any kind of exception occurred that could be handled here. Now you see, let it be the any exceptions, you are getting a proper message that please provide numeric value. Why you have to provide numeric value? Because you are providing the ABC and ABC cannot be converted to the integer because of that you are, uh, you must have to provide this value. Here again now. Arithmetic exception. So, like that, different different options, different different inputs you are providing, and the different different outputs which you will be getting in that. So, you are getting at least the proper message in this. Now, I will tell you some more points when you are writing try catch block. So, you can write try inside the try, you can write the nested try, you can write try catch inside the catch block, you can write all these places at the different different forms. You can write all that options. Okay. When you are writing all these options in a different order, in a different form, here like when I am writing this, catch block something I am writing here and again here I am writing some other things also like number format exceptions, exceptions and all we are writing here. So, there must not be any statement between try and catch, right? Associated with the try, you can write many catch. You cannot write any statement between catch and catch, right? So, this is what the exception we are handling by writing the multiple try and catch block. Thank you.